Hi everyone. I'm here in the script beer.r where we are going to use the data in beer.csv to talk about three things. Number one, beer. Number two, the concept of price elasticity, which is a really important idea in microeconomics. We'll talk about it briefly here in a second. And number three, and really at the core of this script, is bootstrapping, a very useful, very general purpose technique for calculating confidence intervals in statistics. All right, so need a few libraries up here, tidyverse, ggplot, and mosaic. I'm going to go ahead and get those loaded up here by highlighting those and hitting command enter. We're also going to need to read in the data set, okay? So you can either use the command line uh, by pointing to a specific directory and file on your machine, or you can come over here to the import data set. I'm going to go ahead and walk through those scripts right here. From text base, I need to go up to my appropriate uh, folder, which is here, and data, uh, and beer.csv. There it is. Okay, so this is a data set on a bunch of beers. You can read the titles. You know, it's from familiar ones like Bud to perhaps less familiar ones, Widmer, Omission, Pale, Six Pack, etc. And we're going to talk about this column over here. PED stands for Price Elasticity of Demand. Okay, so here's the data set. Only two columns. Very simple. What I would encourage you to do before working through the rest of this script is to read this article that I've linked to here on uh, Investopedia detailing what the concept of price elasticity of demand actually represents. Very briefly, it represents a measure of price sensitivity of the consumers of a given good or service to changes in price. So, for example, if you take a given pr a product, like, say, a six-pack of Bud Light, and you change the price by 1%, let's say you raise it by 1%, well, if you raise the price, stands to reason that fewer people are going to want to buy that good. But how much fewer? Is it 1% fewer? Is it 2%? Is it 3%? Well, that number is the price elasticity. So, for example, if you raise the price by 1% and 3% fewer people want to buy that good or service, well, that good or service would have a price elasticity of demand of 3. So it's representing how sensitive consumers are to a change in price in terms of how much they demand of that good or service. So we've got the data set read in. Here's the first 10 rows, which we saw in the pop-up window. Uh, what we're going to focus on in this data set here is whether this price elasticity of demand differs for two types of beer, IPAs on the one hand and every other type of beer on the other. IPAs are a very uh, popular type of uh, beer that's been, uh, well, wildly popular over the last like 15, 20 years. It stands for India Pale Ale. Uh, it's very polarizing. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Uh, its characteristic is it's extremely bitter. Uh, and some people really, really dig that, uh, that bitterness. Okay, anyway, so we're going to first create a new variable for whether a beer is, in fact, an IPA. And you don't need to know how to do this yourself. I'll just briefly explain what's going on here. We're going to look through this item column right here and ask, Yes or no, does the string IPA, which stands for India Pale Ale, appear in the item description? So for some of these, the answer is going to be no or false. And for some of these, like here on row 3 or row 5 or row 7, the answer is going to be yes or true. And we're going to get that sequence of trues and falses using the string detect function, which is available in the tidyverse. Okay, so basically what this is, this, uh, this pipe of code here is saying, well, let's take the beer data set, let's pipe it to the mutate function, let's mutate or define our new variable called IPA by looking or string detecting in the item column for the string IPA. So that's what's going on in this line of code here. Again, you don't need to know how to do this yourself, but that's what's, that's what's happening in that set of code right there. All right, so after we've done that, if we look at the first 10 lines again, you notice there's a new column here where anytime the word uh, or phrase IPA appears in the item description, we get a true, and anytime it doesn't, we get a false. Let's now look at how elasticity differs for IPAs versus non-IPAs, and we'll make a box plot here. So just using IPA as the X variable and the price elasticity of demand, the PED column, as the outcome variable. So there's our box plot. And what you notice is there's a pretty significant uh, gap here. Uh, it looks like, on average, the IPAs have much more negative numbers here. Now, price elasticity is, uh, we, we often phrase it as a positive number, but in reality, it's a negative number, right? You raise the price by 1%. And uh, demand typically goes down, right? Uh, you know, fewer consumers want to buy something at a more expensive price. That's why these numbers are negative. So looks like if you just kind of eyeball this, I don't know, somewhere a little bit 
uh, less than minus three. That line right there corresponds to minus three. So let's call that, I don't know, minus 2.5 or something like that. About minus 2.5, minus 2.7 percent change in consumer demand for every one percent increase in the price of an IPA, whereas only about a one and a quarter, one and a half percent change uh, for non-IPAs. And just as a brief aside, you might ask, well, how do they know the price elasticity of demand for these goods? Uh, and that's what they would teach you in a class called econometrics over in an uh, economics department. But you can imagine a really simple way to do this would be to like run pricing experiments where the uh, retailers of beer just slow, uh, subtly change the price and observe how uh, people's demand patterns change in response to that. You can imagine that's basically what's going on here. Okay, so we see this, this pattern in the box plot over here that there appears to be a pretty large difference between the price elasticity of an average IPA and an average non-IPA. Let's actually compute the means group by group and then try to, at the end of the day, get a confidence interval for the difference between this mean over here and this mean over here. And we're gonna use, well, the mean function to compute the mean price elasticity of demand for each group here, those where the IPA variable is true and those where it is false. All right, so that's uh, what this line is doing right here. It's telling you that the average price elasticity of demand for an IPA is about minus 2.8, and the average price elasticity of demand for a non-IPA, those in this box right here, is more like minus 1.5. We could also, if we cared about the difference, which we often do if we're trying to understand how, say, being an IPA changes price elasticity of demand, uh, we could compute the difference of those two means directly. I mean, one would be to just kind of, by brute force, compute the means and then subtract them on a calculator or here in the R console, but there's a handy function in R called diffmean that will compute the difference in means without any of that uh, difficulty. So it's right here on line 26. Diffmean is minus 1.3 right there, which is, uh, in fact, if you were to bother to do this by hand, would be exactly the difference between those two numbers there, the average for the IPAs and the average for the non-IPAs, okay? So the question we're trying to address in this script is, what about a confidence interval for that difference? And we are going to use the principle of bootstrapping to address that question. Remember what bootstrapping represents. It is a procedure by which we replicate the process or approximate the process of random sampling from a wider population by sampling from the sample. And those samples from the sample have to have two key criteria. They have to be the same size as the original sample. So all of your samples have to be of size n and they have to be with replacement. And the intuition there is that if you sample with replacement from your original sample, Every bootstrap sample will have its own pattern of ties and omissions. It's kind of unique or idiosyncratic to that sample. And that uh, pattern of ties and omissions will create variability in the statistics that you calculate. Okay, so let's bootstrap a single sample. And you notice here on line 38, the only difference between what we were doing here and what we were doing up here on line 26 is the data. Down here, we are calculating the difference of means for the original data set, minus 1.3. Here, we're calculating the difference of means for the resampled data set or the bootstrap sample. So this is just one bootstrap sample. And you notice that we get, well, a noticeably different difference here. That's for the real data set. That's for our bootstrap sample. And we can do this a few times to just uh, get a little bit of intuition for how much this difference of means changes from one bootstrap sample to the next. On line 38, we do it again. That time we got minus 1.18. Do it again. That time minus 1.2. You kind of get a feel for how different these are from one bootstrap sample to the next. Well, the next step is to replicate it, not just once, not just twice, not just five or 10 times, but many, many thousands of times. And that's what's happening here on line 41. We take our basic uh, command here, where we're bootstrapping the sample right there. We are calculating the summary statistic, in this case, the difference of means for that bootstrap sample. And then we are repeating that process, in this case, 10,000 times and storing the bootstrapped sampling distribution in this object called boot IPA. So this takes a few seconds because we have to recalculate these means uh, for 10,000 different bootstrap samples, but you can see R is done thinking about it. Let's look at the first few lines. Well, there's only one column here and it's called diff mean for the difference in means. Every row represents a different bootstrap sample 
And the number here in the diff mean column represents the difference in means between the IPAs and the non-IPAs. Again, not for your original sample, which is depicted over here in this box plot, but for each bootstrap sample. Bootstrap sample one, two, three, all the way down for 10,000 rows. Let's take a look at a histogram of this bootstrap sampling distribution. So remember, our bootstrap sampling distribution is stored in this object called boot IPA. So that, rather than the original data set, is actually what we're going to pass into ggplot. So we pass boot IPA into ggplot right here. That's our first layer. And then we add on a histogram layer where we are plotting a histogram for the difference of means across all our bootstrap samples. And here they are. That is your bootstrap sampling distribution. And if you just wanted to kind of get a 95% confidence interval by eye here, you would say, well, let's find the, the values here where there's 95% of the probability between what values. So like minus two and a half percent over here. I don't know, eyeballing it, it's probably somewhere about right here, minus 1.45, that's about two and a half percent over there. And down here, maybe minus 1.15 or so, right? It's so about two and a half percent there. 2.5% there, 95% in the middle. That's going to be good enough for many purposes, but you can also get R to calculate it exactly for you using the confint function. So if we ask R for a confidence interval associated with this bootstrap sampling distribution, it tells us ah, that our eyeballs weren't too bad, minus 1.47 to minus 1.15. Yours, if you run this uh, script on your machine, will be slightly different due to Monte Carlo variability. Remember, Bootstrapping is inherently a Monte Carlo procedure where you are simulating a random process on a computer. And while your numbers will be close because they'll have 10,000 samples, it's not going to be exact. You should be pretty close to what we've got here, but not exactly the same. All right, so just to recap, we had two groups in this data set, IPAs and non-IPAs. What we were interested in was the difference in price elasticity of demand on average between this group over here, the trues, and this group over here, the falses. Diff mean, up here on line 26, gave us the answer for our sample of beers, but we had to ask the question, well, what would happen if I'd taken a different sample? And that is what the bootstrapping process was able to answer for us. We simulated the process of, of sampling from the population by sampling with replacement from the original sample. That was what was happening here on line 41, doing that process 10,000 times for each one recalculating the difference of means. This histogram right here represents that bootstrap sampling distribution and the confident function will basically get R to go in and, and eyeball this for you to say, well, where's two and a half percent here and two and a half percent there? And that interval gets you 95% of the probability in this sampling distribution right here. And that is how you bootstrap a difference of means to get a confidence interval.